Hi. So I've given talk about this like um, last week, and that was like way too long. So I'll summarize everything now. I've been working on this project, Commons Host, for about a year and a half plus. Uh, it's an open source static site hosting thing, and if you're familiar, if you've, anyone's ever built a website and you've hosted it in like, like GitHub pages or something like that, this is very familiar. Um, let's say that I have a website, right? I've got uh, some files in here. I've got index.html and a couple of files. The way I deploy that is this little node.js command, um, commons host, that's all it is. You can get it from the website there, npm install it. Um, you just choose sort of like oh, my folder, choose this directory, and then it'll just sort of Okay, by, by popular demand, which domain name should I choose? These are like suggested ones. I like Dazzling Ugly Squid. Dazzling Ugly Squid, <laughs> Dandy Helpless Bird, or Transcendent Tall Rabbit. Uh, or squid? Yeah. Let's try that. So it should deploy that. Um, it generates the domain. It sets up a let's encrypt certificate. Uh, and then it saves the domain. So the next time you run it, it'll remember that domain. And uh, with a little bit of luck, that should now be deploying. You know, But this is a demo, so bear with me if it fails. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Thank you, thank you. Live demos would win. Um, so yeah, th that's also my new logo, by the way, because the last two weeks I've been like sort of talking about this thing that I've been doing in, in silence for so long. Um, and one of the reasons was is that actually I'm trying to deploy this CDN on these tiny little boxes that I can't find myself. So friends like Kenny there has graciously stepped up. And basically, I'm, this is just a little Odroid computer, like a little Korean thing. Um, basically, the CPU of like a Samsung Galaxy S5 from a few years ago that is now just dirt cheap, and they put it on a tiny little board. Let me see if I can show that. Don't worry. OK, so tiny little computer with a one gigabit port, eight core CPU, and an SSD. And basically, this is like the most compact CDN server in the world, I think. Um, and my goal is actually to deploy these like all over the world that there aren't data centers. And so right now, I'm putting a few of them in Singapore, because it's like where my friends live, mostly. And also in like Vietnam and Philippines, India, uh, Malaysia. Uh, and so a couple of days ago, I started talking to people like, that I know somehow in South Africa and Kenya, I think. So I really want to put these like where there's no, not a lot of data centers or not affordable data centers. And I think there's a kind of a cool thing. Um, and so it's just static, static, static site hosting. Uh, everything's open source, so if you like, I mean, it doesn't have to run on this. I'm just doing it so it's easier. I can I can also deploy this on like usual like normal EC2, you know, VPSs, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you you know, I'm actually looking for help with this. So if you if you want to help me host something like this, if you don't mind sharing a little bit of uh, bandwidth with the community, then please contact me. Um, so yeah, the the website was contact com Commons host, and all the code is on um, GitLab. Oh, by the way. If, I think, OK, I'm going to just double demo this thing now. If we have, a, yeah, a minute and a half, we can totally do this. I don't know my password. Ah, oh, damn it, OK. Keychain for the win. All right, all the best practices coming up. This is being recorded for all time, right? Uh, do you want me to pause the recording? Nah, it's fine. Nobody will ever tell. What's your password, this one character? No, it's like a fingerprint scanser. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, physical security. So uh, anyway, um, OK. So that works. I can see my dazzling ugly squid here, right? And then there's a little bit of work to be done. So I want to sh be able to like deploy from the website and stuff like that. So stuff, this is sort of things that I'm working on. I want to uh, actually also show something that I did, which is, so this whole thing actually came out of my obsession with HTTP2 server push, um, which is what I'm using actually to load this website quickly without doing anything like Webpack. Um, and if you, if you, for instance, look at the source code here, you'll see lots and lots of, oop, hang on, network tab, where are you? Wait, yeah? Oh, not Chrome. OK, great. But basically what happens here is, uh, could we sort this properly? Yeah, there we go. So all these files actually are like little JavaScript files, little CSS files like you would normally write application. But instead of like concatenating it all to one blob, it actually pushes all the files. And that it does with uh, a little thing called a push manifest that I created. OK, come on. <laughs> so there's this spec that I can use that basically just says, 
if you if you're going for this URL, then you know uh, use these globs here. And so, for instance, on the homepage, you just push all of the JPEGs and you push all the CSS files, and it just automatically does that. The web server supports this. So, like, if you push your static site to this with a couple of rules, you can like make your website super fast because it pushes and just eliminates all the round trips that you normally get with the browser. And that's my time for today. Okay. But my next question is. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, does anyone else? Does anyone have a question? So this is this is something you've been working on as a as a business, right? Um, I mean, recently I just totally ran out of money, so now I'm trying to earn a little bit. Okay. It's it's not like I'm selling these things for profit, really. It's yeah, yeah. No, I was just wondering how you. It's probably costing me more. Yeah. Supporting yourself. Uh, oh, um, yeah. I think I have an issue for that. Uh, <laughs> it's a popular issue for me. But basically, I've been <laughs> thinking about lots of ideas for a while. Because, um, yeah, I, one of the interesting topics to me is actually how do you do open source free software sustainably? Um, and so even though it's all open and available, anyone could replicate what I do. I think there's value in just bringing everyone together and, and deploying this network. And that's something that's not easily you know, copyable. So I think there's some, some natural monopoly or whatever you would call it that could sustain the project in the long term. So you could go and say, hey, you're a media company and you want to you know, serve content in all these countries that you can't put like a DC2 instance or they don't have S3, right? Then maybe we can provide something collectively. And that, that wouldn't be just me, that could be like anyone who goes out and deploys these pops in all over Africa or, or, or Middle East or someplace. Uh, they, they could then benefit from doing that actually. Like they're down actually on the ground, the boots on the ground, putting that hardware together, building the networks and setting up the servers. And so over time, I think that can sort of create a marketplace for people to actually build infra, infra, infrastructure all over the world. Same thing as what already sort of the big guys do, but this is more grassroots and I think more suitable for um, like uh, the world that is not like US, Europe, Japan, Singapore, you know, like. Oh, um, but by the way, I think the reason that this could actually work that we're all hosting, because like the, the site that I just showed and the way, that, the way it uploaded and all that, it's actually running in, in one of these things at my house right now. Um, actually, it's not even running on this. It's like running on an old iMac that I used to play games on. Um, I stopped playing games. I'm being very productive because I've started using it as a server. <laughs> so it's, like, it's like this nice positive spiral. Um, but yeah, the idea is that a lot of people actually have fiber internet today, um, especially in Asia, it turns out. Like, like three quarters of all fiber subscribers in the world live in Asia. It's because you don't have all that existing infrastructure investment that you know, ISPs and people who are building new buildings and condos and businesses actually like, just put in fiber by default. And you don't have to like, cannibalize your, you know, an ISP doesn't have to cannibalize its own like, ADSL and cable you know, monopoly or whatever. That infrastructure doesn't exist in, in most places in, in the rest of the world. And so you just put fiber and you instantly have like 10 gigabit or 40 gigabit or 100 gigabit connections you know, in the future. Like, it, it's just really nice that people can just run these things at, at home. It was, it was actually a surprise to me that you can get uh, fiber connections in like, you know, all the major cities in Southeast Asia, China, India, uh, now it turns out you can get in all over Africa too. Uh, the, the, ca the capital cities in some of the countries, you can actually get fiber gigabit connections for not much more, in some cases less than we pay in Singapore. So it's actually, it seems to be turning out quite well. But yeah, sorry, should I, yeah. What do you mean like a publicly routable IP for one of the boxes? Yeah, yeah, one of the main issues actually that I've, that I've faced in actually trying to roll this out is static IPv4. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not necessary to have static, but I can, I can route to a dynamic IP and just keep checking, right? Like a dynamic DNS. Um, but yeah, a lot of IS, ISPs, my republic, my republic, um, actually they really, really um, put every single customer, even on a residential connection, behind a NAT. So typically that was like a, a mobile phone thing. And that actually drove in part the massive adoption of IPv6 on mobile networks. Like most mobile networks in the world are actually IPv6. Most residential networks are not. Um, the opposite here in Singapore, I think. In, the phone in, in is Singapore, you have data to be IPv6 by the government, residential network. Uh, from what I've seen, like there is not a single ISP besides. Well, no, I think M1 offers IPv6, but no one else does, as far as I know. Or maybe the smaller guys, like uh, Super Internet and stuff, stuff the cool ones. Uh, but uh, some of them block port 80 as well. Which is yeah, in so fact, in fact, yesterday, just someone in Japan said, uh, another HTTP2 developer guy was uh, s s showing how like ISP is there because they optimize traffic over port 80. They actually blocked like HTTPS, which I'm doing everything over HTTP2, so everything is 100% yeah. encrypted TLS, right? So, so like I think a lot of these ISPs are kind of like still in the in the, in the dark ages with 
their policies, their infrastructure. And so, there's just going to be problems. So how does it work when I deploy something? How is it going to choose where it's going to be deployed? Because if I understand correctly, you basically yeah. you put a bunch of everybody's home. Yeah. Then eventually gets deployed somewhere. So how do you choose where it's deployed? Does it get redundantly? Currently, it's completely redundant, so it's limited by the size of the smallest drive in all of the edges. So it's clearly not sustainable. <laughs> so yeah, like some kind of some kind of more efficient usage would be based on caching. Some you know the, ba the most basic LRU cache would actually solve almost all those issues. So every node has a copy of the whole internet of um, Well, because it's static sites, it's never really older than the deployment. Like I know exactly when the site was deployed, so it's never going to be older than that. It's not doing um, like dynamic caching right now, and I might actually keep it that way. I might keep this just because it's there's a lot of headaches that come with caching dynamic content, like like, like traditional CDNs do. Uh, when you just do static, you don't have to really worry about like um, running out of I don't know, like like dealing with caching and expiration. Uh, another issue that I fingerprint sensor guys, don't worry. <laughs> uh, so. Another issue that I, that I, or a use case that I was con considering is places where there's a lot of power outages. Uh, like a friend of mine uh, runs a little place in, uh, in, in a city outside of Ho Chi Minh and they've got very frequent power outages, whether it's his building or the, the neighborhood or whatever. Um, could be cool to like just couple this with like a little battery pack uh, and have, have, have an alternative that has maybe like a Wi-Fi antenna and turn it into an access point so people can actually go up to it and download a bunch of content. Piracy as a, a sort of a, a driving motivator, but I totally do. <laughs> Basically, I, I, I think there's a lot of interesting use cases that come from actually being able to deploy this. So that's the stage I'm at. So, right, so in, uh, I, I was uh, in contact with some guys doing uh, d data centers in Myanmar. Oh, so cool. the big problem they have is uh, power, yeah. uh, which is not reliable. So what they were planning on doing is actually creating based. So they want to build a like a tier four data center. So that's a single floor data centers, but what okay. they want to do is basically build what they call a mini, I don't know if it's standard mini use, but basically a small data center, mm -hmm. which they will put near the land pole and things like that where there is power, and basically use them like a sort of a mesh network that goes around there, and have part of the computing cool. there as well. So actually this kind of stuff could be a good fit for these type of models. That's awesome. Uh, this probably then like tier 14 or something, sounds like. But tier 4 is actually, so as the tier goes up, it's actually better. So which way is up? Four is up from three. Also, you're saying three is better? No, three is really small. So, like, so like that's what I'm saying. This is like really small, right? This is literally like a phone, basically. It's almost exactly the same hardware. So it's I put like a little. Security, reliability kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. From okay, from okay. Yeah. I should ask you more questions when you do your talk. Can we do? Can we stop recording now? Yeah, it's out of time, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good.